Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Nerd Nest podcast. We have got a ton of stuff to talk about. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in the show notes. I honestly don't think we're going to get to it all, but we wanted to start today's episode off by talking about the the Windows handhelds uh, and whether or not they were going to kind of follow what the Steam Deck has done. If you look at the Steam Deck when it launched, it launched in a very different state than it is now. And we already have seen big updates from Lenovo for the Legion Go. We've seen a, a recent big update for the ROG Ally. And so I thought that we would start today off by talking about uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, Russ, you recently put out a six month video as did Carrie about the, I don't, Rich, did you put out a six month video for the, for the Ally? Okay, I didn't think so. Um, <laughs> Russ, six months later, talk about these updates, and do you feel like it's a different machine now than it, than it was kind of like the Steam Deck feels different? What do you think, Russ? Yeah, you know, it's uh, the six-month thing was really just finding a date to do it because, honestly, one month later, it was already that good. Like, that was that was the thing is when we first got it, it was pretty rough. Like, the, the uh, armory crate was kind of buggy and whatnot. But after like when it first released and maybe the first week after that, I was good with it. It was snappy. We had all sorts of nice features. The six month one was a good opportunity just because they had a couple of those additional like the gyro and then a couple other tweaks within Armory Crate, which I thought were significant. Uh, but honestly, I was happy after that one month. And so uh, it's been it's been big for me, not to the point of like Steam Deck, like seamless kind of feeling. But man, like like Carrie loves to say, it makes Windows melt away. And I, I really appreciate that idea in that. I don't mind using a Windows machine when it's with the ROG Ally. The Legion Go is not quite there yet, but we are getting there. Uh, Carrie, wh what what is exactly does Russ mean by Windows melting away? Um, I oh. I've been using it especially this weekend, but I was b babysitting my grandson, so I was super busy. I really didn't get a chance to really put the new update through its paces. How is it making Windows melt away? So there's a few parts of uh, this general usability in Windows for me on a few specific apps that I use where it becomes necessary. And one of the reasons why I've always been a defender of keyboard and mouse being necessary, like physical keyboard and mouse being necessary on Windows handheld gaming PCs is the use of uh, Alt-Tab or Alt-F4 to quickly cycle between stuff or just close the forefront app immediately. And um, it wasn't always the best experience for me when I would say the close app on the Asus ROG Ally. And just bringing up the side windows was always like this delayed input. It didn't feel, it didn't feel right. It felt like it, uh, there was like something chunking in the background that you could feel. And with the latest update, all of that was just super responsive in in every way. And it was like all of the buttons that I was pressing, like all of my intuition to just do something was apparent. And it just felt like, oh, okay, I don't like the front end for it. I've never been the biggest front end person, but how they will just dig into every one of those and just bring up everything is really, really well done. And you, I've been able to, from the first time ever on a Windows handheld PC didn't need to connect or wish for a keyboard. Yeah. Like at all. Yeah, it was it was like I didn't I I was fine enough just using all the what they had. So right now the Asus RG Ally, despite its micro SD card issues and there's supposedly like some version that is the correct one to buy that doesn't have as many failures, um, I still would recommend it as like if you wanted a Windows based PC gaming handheld, I would Pretty much recommend that first um rich have you checked out the new update at all with uh, the gyro enabled no so i went to update everything and i was able to update everything except armory crate for some reason it just got stuck at connecting the internet so i haven't been mm -hmm. able to get the full update i'll have to uninstall probably armory crate and reinstall it i will say i for the last few months, it's been my son's handheld because he likes to play Minecraft. So he's going to need a Windows handheld for Minecraft and all the mods and things like that. And he's been really enjoying it. And he does, you know, he if he's 
just playing Minecraft and playing Steam, he never really runs into any issues where he needs a keyboard or anything like that. So it it works well for him. He's about 10 years old, you know, so he's having a good time with it. Yeah, let's talk about that update process real quick, because I saw some tweets about this and I ran into this too, where uh, when you compare it to like the Steam Deck, like you just go into, you know, you hit the Steam button, you go down to system or whatever, and you're like update and it updates and then you're done with these Windows handhelds. You got to go into like, first off, there's the Armory Crate. You got to update that. And then there's my Asus. You got to update that. And then you have to make sure that the latest Windows updates are up to date. And you have to go into the Windows store and update that. Like I saw yeah. um, Bob Wolf was trying to, he was trying to take advantage of, I guess like Microsoft had put out a different version of the Xbox app. And he was like mm -hmm. trying to update to that. And he couldn't, he just couldn't get it to update to that. So he just said, I'll just use Steam anyway and gave up. And uh, like... That's a really bad friction point that I think Asus and Lenovo, and it's not their fault. It's because they're using Windows and Windows has all, all these different things. Um, but it's really, it's kind of a pain point. Uh, do you, is there a way that these companies can get around that? Or is it always going to be that way because it's Windows? Russ, you use all kinds of Windows handhelds. Yeah. Do you think they they have a solution to that they can apply or are they stuck because Windows has legacy stuff to deal with? I'll say that from a technical perspective, I, I'll let Carrie speak to that because there, maybe there's an option there. But for me, yeah, it's there's no option to it. I even made a whole video about how to set up an ROG ally because I was like, these are the four places you have to go to update. And that was enough for me to like inspire me to make a whole video about it. I will say, Rich, for your problem, I had that too with my non-extreme Z1 yesterday. And I ended up just resetting it three times. And on the third reboot, then it finally worked. And I don't know what, what happened there, but it's just kind of weird. And so yeah. it's yeah, you know, one of those quirks and it's unfortunate. I will say it's worse on a lot of the other handhelds because you also have to manage drivers updates on those. And with the ROG Alley, you don't because that's part of the My Asus package. Mm -hmm. And so they will put the, the GPU drivers within that. So I just kind of trust them and I just hit that update once a week or whenever it comes out. Weren't they also planning on consolidating those two things, at least My Asus and Armory Crate? Am I making that up? Did I hallucinate that? I didn't hear that. I'm not sure. Okay. They should. That would be great. They would. Be yeah. Great. They There's absolutely no should. At the, yeah. at the very least, for the for that, right? Like for updates, you update in one place. Like, it doesn't make sense. Uh, Antonio Cunningham in chat says, uh, and by the way, we're doing this live, people. If you didn't know, so be here for the live shows. Sometimes uh, they said Antonio, or uh, they said I never understood why people care so much about updates. As long as something works, I never update because it <laughs> tends to break things. Well, mm. the reason why I wanted to check out this update is because it, uh, it, it adds new features, new features that I definitely wanted. Uh, and we'll talk about gyro in a second. But a second ago, Russ, you said, Kerry, maybe he could uh, talk about the technical explanation about whether or not they can get around this Windows nonsense. Kerry? There actually is a few ways that they could, but they would have to work a little bit more with Microsoft and uh, the unfortunate bit of that is that if they're working with Microsoft, there's going to be uh, internal uh, hurdles, uh, bu bureaucratic nonsense that they would have to deal with as well. They could uh, put a lot of the different drivers and stuff inside of Windows Update Repo, where Windows is going to do their updates itself. So it would not necessarily need to be attached to Armory Crate. Speaking of uh, firmware and all the other stuff, uh, that might be a little bit more difficult, and that's something that they're going to have to do through Armory Crate, or at least would probably be preferable to do that rather than through Windows Update. The Windows Store could more than likely be the correct avenue to be handling uh, Armory Crate itself. So you could decouple it from uh, needing to install separately. One of the issues that I had with doing the beta update was that I had to full nuke Armory Crate. I like Armory Crate had to be uninstalled. If I just tried to update Armory yeah. Crate, it didn't want to install at all. So I had to full nuke it and then install the update for that to actually take. So um, it sounds like what other people are having a problem with is that that issue. And if you remove Armory Crate, all of a sudden you have a tablet uh, with nothing that works really well. So 
uh, you're in like an I and Neo situation where you're like, oh, this is really bad. And now you have to like navigate and do things and it's not very intuitive. So having Armory Crate be a part of Windows Store um, as a UA, uh, UWA app, um, it probably might be a better idea insofar as uh, getting people springboarded into loading other things automatically so that it gets into a standard state. But to get to that might be a bit difficult. Um, but yeah, so there's there's things that are there technically possible. Uh, it's just that if in the Rube Goldberg machine of what they're doing doesn't kick off, uh, you're going to just like, you know, see a little domino go tick and then nothing happens. It's just like, <laughs> wait, where's all the other steps, guys? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, and I, as somebody who, like, I didn't know what to do first. So I was like, I tried updating one thing and then I was like, well, maybe I got to go to this other thing. And sometimes, like, I... I I would have a progress bar and the progress bar would fill and then it would just sit there and I'm like, did the update go through or am I waiting for something? And then I like pick it up and I'm looking at the screen and then it just doesn't do anything for a minute. And then it is like, okay, now we got a reboot or something. And I was like, okay, um, that's a, just a whole nother problem or an entire different problem where, you know, you constantly have progress bars that mean absolutely nothing, but I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Um, but I agree the, that like, yeah, this, this is really on Microsoft, right? Like Microsoft has been taking half measures when it comes to um, making handheld use more approachable. And hopefully that's because they're, you know, actually working in the background pretty heavily on doing on some sort of big upgrade, but that's just hope, right? Like I, <laughs> there's no, there's no evidence to support that. So I would like to see Microsoft absolutely like take this handheld use case and build a version of their OS that, that is, lent, is lent towards that. It is surprising uh, to, to, to see the, the, the distance Microsoft has done, um, it, there's some articles I will talk about the Microsoft bubble where developers and people inside Microsoft do things for the desktop that are like no one would do ever. Like in the 90s, they're like, oh, look, we can do nine CRTs and have them be one big desktop. And it's like, <laughs> no one is going to do this, guys. It's like, no, 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 there's like three flight simulator guys. They're going to love this, I promise you. <laughs> and uh, there's kind of like that, like when you think of like when Microsoft was trying to push tablets when resistive screens were still around. You need to use styluses and stuff. And they had interfaces right. for using a stylus. And they've always wanted to do a 10-foot experience. And they've had Xbox and they've had all this other stuff. And no one in Microsoft said, hey, you know, guys, maybe we should have someone be able to control Windows with uh, via X input. And no one said that for some reason. It's <laughs> like, how could you have not said, like, it, it, you, if you press the Xbox button, it'll bring up the Xbox widget and you can only kind of right. like do things inside of that layer, but nothing with Windows directly. And it's like, if they just did that, that would have been enough to like kind of handle things, which is funny because Android actually allows you to use X input and move around and press A and B. And it already has done that since like Wild. Android 2.3. So it's Wild. like, they've been, I don't know. It's really surprising to me how A for enter and like B for exit or like some other button or just hold down mm -hmm. A for to bring up the context menu has been something that people have been doing for so long now that Windows hasn't even done as a base step. Instead, the thing we get is compact mode in the Xbox app. And I'm just like, that's <laughs> all you did, guys? Like, come on. <laughs> like, don't even open that one up in the background. Yep. So the reason that I wanted to update this is because of the gyro. And uh, I watched your video, uh, Russ, where you talked about the gyro and you said I, I, you said something like along the this is the best gyro that I've ever had on a Windows handheld, right? Like, like can you talk yeah, about that for a just, little bit? Yeah, so it's it's not like a true gyro like within the Steam like input implementation. And it's not something that, for example, uh, you can turn on, at least I couldn't figure it out, to turn on within an emulator so that it emulates like switch gyro. I couldn't get that to work. What it does is it emulates like your right stick or your left stick. And so what you, and I put it to the right, my right stick, or you can also have it emulate a mouse. So then what I do is I turn on gyro. And so then as I move it and you have to use a key to kind of enable it, or you, you can choose not to as well. 
So like Fox did in his video as well, I have left trigger that enables the gyro. So if I hold on left trigger while I have a game that has gyro running, then now the right stick will also be gyro enabled. I can still use the right stick, but I kind of have a little bit more nuance if I just move it instead. And so when playing Destiny, it's been perfect. Like I, I move around, you know, and whatnot, and then I look down the sights by pressing the left trigger, and then I just kind of ease a little bit to get the headshot. And it's actually been working really well. Uh, I play better with that gyro kind of function set up than I do without it. And that's the first time I've ever had a gyro uh, experience that's actually an improvement. And so that was pretty cool. Whenever I try gyro, like on the Steam Deck, you know, I try Portal 2 or whatever, and I try to do like the flick thing with like the thumb pad and, and all that stuff, it is a disaster. Like I am so bad at that stuff. It feels like 2002 all over again when I'm trying to play, you know, PS2, Red Faction 2 or something. I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> so you I can set up go ahead. gyro you can set up gyro on the Steam Deck just like that, right? And that's how it's mm -hmm. that's how it previously was um like on the Steam controller, I believe, where because I don't mm. think the Steam controller had any like capacitive touch, right? Uh so it didn't necessarily know when you were touching. It um, does on the track pads. On the track pad, yes. Yeah. Um, but and like, there's no, there, there is no right stick, so that's like true. you would, like it would always work like that. But go ahead. But mm. but I do remember you can, well, even now, right? You can map it to a trigger. You can map your gyro button, quote unquote, to a trigger, so that you're only using gyro when you're holding down the left trigger or holding down whatever. Um, and yeah. actually, I and Neo works almost exactly sounds like uh, the way the ally works where Ioneo emulates the right analog stick. Um, that's a problem for me, but that's a me problem, right? Because it means that I'm not able to emulate the mouse. That's one thing. Uh, and then the second thing is that it means that I don't have access to flick stick because flick stick is, uh, is using the right analog stick to emulate the mouse. So you can't, mm. if you're trying to use gyro to emulate the, the right analog stick, it won't work. Gotcha. The other thing was that what I really like about the armory create option is that you can invert the axis as well in gyro in that layer. And so I play inverted with my right analog stick, but with gyro, I have to be non inverted. So I have to invert it within the gyro function as well. So that it's <laughs> normal. Isn't that weird? That's just how my brain works. And so that so actually like works for me. You're pushing down so on the stick. But then if and you want to look up, you would up. look up at the same time. I would look up. Yep. Exactly. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> I know. I'm left handed, too. It's even crazier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just play the games upside down, Russ. Uh, so I, I, I've been playing gyro games since this since the Steam controller. I'm a huge fan of gyro. I played all of 20 uh, Doom 2016 uh, from the beginning to the end. Uh, using my Steam controller and gyro, and it was using Steam input to pretend it was a mouse and keyboard. It was a fantastic experience. I absolutely loved it. And I'm a huge fan of gyro. Uh, so I was very excited when this update came out because I was really irritated that they had hardware for the gyro in the ROG Ally, but they didn't use it for anything. So this yeah. update was huge for me. I installed it. Uh, I, you know, went through all those steps. I ended up, uh, in installing Halo, uh, infinite and booting up some, uh, just, just a custom map by myself so I could just try it out and see how it was. And I did emulate, um, mouse because that's going to give you the best results. I feel like, um, it still, it didn't feel responsive enough for me. Like when I pulled that left trigger to activate it, which is, well, you, you, you really have to do it that way because they don't have the capacitive thumbsticks that the Steam Deck has. But when you pull the left trigger to activate it, it feels like there's just a little tiny bit of delay before it registers. And I, I just feel like it was sluggish. And I, I there's just not enough tools to make it work the way that I want it to. That being said, like this thing shipped with a gyro in it and you couldn't use it and now you can use it. So obviously we're going to see Asus continually update, um, armor, armory crate. Uh, they're going <laughs> to keep updating it in order to give us access to this stuff. And I think that that's, that's great. You look back at this, the steam controller when it first launched and it was like, it didn't have gyro when it first launched either. Like they shipped it with, without, the gyro enabled and that came later so no i didn't like, know that 
Yeah, this is the same thing all over again where they're where they're updating it. And I think that that's awesome. And Lenovo, they need to do the same thing because they have gyro, but it is, of the three, it is the worst implementation. <laughs> it only implement, um, uh, impersonates, that's not the word I'm looking for, mimics. It only does sticks, no mouse. And you gotta, yeah. you gotta have mouse. Un unless they get, you know, better stick emulation uh for me anyway um rich uh any thoughts on there before we move on no i think for certain um i'm happy to i, I will say for the gyro specifically it does feel weird that it took six months after release to get that working i wonder what was going on um but outside of that i am happy with like uh, actually both Asus and Lenovo and how they've been updating both of their systems. Legion Go is rough, um, specifically Legion Space, uh, but they have been providing lots of updates and they have a roadmap planned. And so it's good to see that up front. Whereas at least for my time with the ROG Ally, I felt like I was in the dark up until we got that six month update. Right? Like we have been receiving updates for a while, but there were there are questions around gyro I, i'm in the rlg ally discord and they do like a post every few weeks or every month of like a state of the ally and in that state of the ally every time is like we still don't have gyro uh, so it was a little bit weird but i like being able to see the roadmap in advance and know that they're still working on it because this is a new sector so i want to <laughs> i want to have that confidence that these these guys are in it for the long haul so we had a question uh, that somebody posted. Uh, Hector uh, said, do you guys think we'll be seeing yearly updates for the ROG Ally and Legion Go, uh, kind of like they do with laptops where they bring out a new one each year? Uh, if so, which AMD processors could take advantage of? I'm going to, personally, I'm not going to answer anything about the AMD processors thing because that's way beyond my pay grade. Uh, <laughs> I'll leave that to you guys for that. But I think to, I think every year, is probably too often. Um, what do you think, Russ? Do you think every year is too often, or, or you know, when when people buy, you know, I want to buy the next, I want to buy the next thing today. I don't want to buy something that's been out for a year. Yeah, I think that uh, it's it's going to be up to Asus whether or not they treat this like a phone or a laptop, or they treat this like a gaming console. And so I would rather it be every other year at the very least, uh, or at the very most. Um, but yeah, if they treat it like a laptop, they put out a new spec one every year, a new phone every year. And so uh, I'm hoping they don't treat it like that. Uh, at the same time, you know, nobody says that, you, and I'm just saying this to everybody who's watching, nobody says you have to upgrade every year. Like right. just because, like, just like I had my last phone for two years and I probably would have kept it for longer, but my son broke his phone. And so I was like, looks like I get a new phone and he gets my old yeah. one. Um, you don't have to buy a new one every single time it comes out. The new ones are for the people who didn't buy the last one. So I can see the argument for having it every year, but also is it, are the updates going to be enough to warrant it? What do you think about that Fox? So, uh, this is actually a question we should also ask the people that are joining us live right now, because this is Absolutely. a question that I find myself oh, totally okay with. Now, the processor that they're most likely going to go with, it would be AMD's Z2, which would just be a, uh, a relabeling of the 8850U, which would be their Zen 5 counterpart, which uh, so far we haven't seen anything of. We've only seen Zen 4 re 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 rebadges. Uh, so Zen 5 is typically what we're going to get, which is the 8850U. The Z2 would be the AI cores that are disabled on there. But here's the, the deal, right? And there's a bigger conversation that we need to have here that I think is good that we're having this particular, con you know, this conversation, uh, couching it around the Steam Deck OLED, is that Valve, with updating the Steam Deck with the Steam Deck OLED, has once again uh, kind of positioned themselves as the prominent handheld that to get. And both Asus and Lenovo have the problem that they're not making any money from game sales. Lenovo has Lenovo space and like right in front and center, like right under the fold, they're already trying to sell you games. So they're trying to do some affiliate sales. 
Asus doesn't. Asus has it like in the background. Like it's like you have to go through like four clicks to be able to even get to Asus's anywhere to make affiliate money type of thing. Hmm. Um, so when we uh, think about this, right, they have to have this $700 number because gamers, if they see a $1,000 number, they're going to be like, oh, that's way too expensive. So Asus and Lenovo are like dancing around this area where they want it to be as inexpensive as possible. AMD has to sell it to them at what cost, which is what we see the Z1 or the Z series that came out to rebadge and redo the 7840U and just chop off the AI stuff or at least firmware disable them. So we're in this weird situation where how much is AMD selling these for? We know uh, from Lenovo and Asus that they don't get official driver support. So that means that Asus or whoever has to like potentially pay or do something with AMD to make the drivers like how Valve does for Windows drivers. Like that's why we have so so like far behind drivers on the Steam Deck. So going along this way, if we're saying, generally speaking, we're probably going to see a Z2 and you're going to see an update every year. Going over that, there is Strix Halo, which is coming from AMD and is, would anyone pay $1,400 for a super Asus ROG Ally, like an actual ultra one that has 256 big wide memory with, you know, a thing where you plug it in and you don't need an eGPU. It can just ramp up there by itself. So there are implications of it being even better on lower, uh, lower TDPs with having a 256 bit wide memory bus as well. So would anyone do that? Or would we all collectively agree that we are our own worst enemies and no one's going to pay for that? So we can't have nice things. Oh, so people are going to pay for it. <laughs> So this is the question, right? Like, let's ask the people in the comments, would they spend $1,400 for a super Asus ROG ally? Or would they only get the Z2 version for $700? And that's at least one hell no. (laughs) (laughs) Well, okay. So there's a poll. I made a poll uh, in chat, which is hard because I got to get another screen. Uh, But I made a poll in chat, which is happening right now. And I went through while Carrie was talking and I grabbed a couple of comments to, to, for us to respond to. Uh, we got one here from, where did it go? Uh, JB says, every two years minimum for a hardware refresh. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming they mean, like like you, Russ, uh, that they don't want it sooner than that. That's what I'm going to guess. Uh, Antonio yeah. Cun- Cunningham says, every year is way too soon. When companies have too frequent updates, it means they're not going to support their older products because they'll become too stretched too thin. And I don't necessarily disagree with Antonio, but we have seen companies like, you know, like Apple, for for instance, you know, we talk about phones, like their uh, operating system, I think iOS 17 or whatever, whatever operating system we're on now, man, it works on a lot of their phones. Like you go back for quite a long time and you, you can still use those. Um, do you, uh, Rich, do you think that that, that that holds water, that they get stretched too thin and that they can't do it? Or these companies are just looking at profits and saying, all right, we can, we can cut, cut, cut these people off. Yeah. There are a couple different ways to look at it. Um, so with phones specifically, I, I feel like Apple has gotten a lot better in the last few years. So you mentioned iPhone 17, that's a good, or OS 17, that's a good call. But before that, right? Like planned obsolescence was a real thing. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, and so like, you know, your phone would suck after two years. And I have the SE 2020 and it's still good. I don't have any intention to to trade up, um, but that that is a legit concern. I think with Asus and Lenovo, they are, they've done this, right? They do yearly models. So I don't necessarily think that they're not gonna support, or I don't think that their support for handhelds is gonna be any different than their current support for laptops, right? Uh, so if you're, content with their support for laptops, then I think you'll be content with their support for for their handhelds. What I think, though, is that they they're going to have a difficult time if they let Valve dictate the pace. They're going to have a difficult time when it comes to sales, right? Like if you let if you only come out after Valve releases a Steam Deck or around the time Valve releases a Steam Deck, then you're always going to be playing catch up against Valve and the Steam Deck. Like I don't see how they can continue to operate in the handheld model if they're just following uh, Valve's footsteps. Mm-hmm. Um, Sergeant Reaper in chat says, 
I say Asus should focus on making a next gen version over making smaller upgrades. So I think what they mean is, you know, spacing things out and not having little upgrades. I mean, look, we all we all kind of called the the Steam Deck OLED the biggest mid gen refresh ever, but they didn't increase the power at all. Do you do you guys think? Uh, Fox, what do you think? Do you think that uh, the Asus ROG Ally or the Lenovo Legion Go next one, do you think they say, all right, here's the OLED version. Do they do it the same way that Valve did where they have all of these little things, but they're still aiming for that same power profile? Or do you think that that power profile needs to, like, because of the way that they always do business, needs to update? Yeah, all right, so uh, if we were to look at this through the lens of what the manufacturers want to do, I think that they want to have a yearly cadence where it will be whatever type of uh, performance bump that they'll get out of it. And that could mean a few different things. Um, we are typically always in some type of cycle where there is a TikTok refresh uh, insofar as uh, microarchitectures that will happen on CPU or GPU. On AMD side, we've been in a, a weird situation where we've kind of expected like a bigger bump going from RDNA 2 to RDNA 3 uh, should have felt like something larger than it was, but it turned out to be just more RDNA 2. Uh, so a lot of hopes are on RDNA 3 plus, uh, but you look at, again, strict Halo, which will just cost more money. Uh, they're just more, there's more GPU and you need more memory to bandwidth to service that GPU. So if we look at it through, what is there? 128 bit wide uh, handheld only. I think they're going to use the Z2, but we're going to, I think we're going to rapidly come into a real question here. Valve is allowed to participate in PC gaming handhelds, but operate much like a console maker does, where they can sell the Steam Deck at a loss or at cost. And none of the other partner, no PC handheld maker can operate in that space. I mean, you look at 550 for the OLED base model, right? That's a fantastic price. Asus and all those other guys are not touching that price. And like, what margins are they going to be even talking about? It's, someone's got to give. Either AMD's got to make less money, and potentially they do with the Z1 with the with the capped AI cores, or uh, the margins have to be smaller for Asus and Lenovo. And is that something that, that they're going to want to deal with? You look at all the returns that they got in at Best Buy, what I, we have no idea what the hell is going on when we look at you know their forecasts or whatever. We would hope that they're going to make another one. Dell still has to enter in it with an Alienware version somewhere down the line. So, uh, <laughs> which is funny, right? Because the UFO they were the first ones there before Steam Deck, and that was just a concept that went away. But that was using Intel, which wasn't really uh, enough at the time. You also have Intel coming back in there with Meteor Lake. Meteor Lake's GPU looks to be as performant as 780M, and if we push more power into it, it'll actually supersede that. So you have something that at 30 watt might be better than an Asus RG Ally today using you know the, the Z1. Uh, and if Intel is going to say, say, hey, we'll give you these chips for a really great price, which means that their margins can be better, but still match that price that gamers want to pay. Uh, this is a very, very complex mo market only because gamers are super vocal and don't want to pay for anything because they'll compare everything. <laughs> They're like, the Switch oh, yeah. 2 is out, and it's way better than that, and I paid 350 and you guys suck, and <laughs> I, I, if you want me to pay 800 I'd rather buy a gaming laptop with a 3060 inside of it, and all of these arguments are kind of okay, but they're like so divorced from the reality of, you're not going to buy a gaming laptop that has 15 minutes of battery life and bust that out in a bus, and start playing it with an external controller and everything because it's a totally different thing. But that argument always comes up and you oh, will yeah. never escape it because that is the, that is every, every conversation I've ever had, like with the GPD win two, it was $650 and people are like for $650, I'll get a laptop that'll destroy this thing. And I'm like, great. You can't put that in your pocket and you're not going to be able to use it anywhere. Else. Like you're talking about something else. I don't know why you're having this conversation with me right now, but <laughs> it still comes up. This is a tr true problem that we have to collectively get around. And I don't know how that's going to wash out at the end of this. So you know how we can fix it ahead. is we can we can get uh, another company to do subsidized software or hardware for software. And that's what my company. Would that be 
<laughs> they <laughs> they need to make it handheld. They can subsidize the crap out of it, sell it at a lower cost, and and, and have some true competition with the Steam Deck, and that'd be pretty great. Everyone else is going to just be screwed, but that'd be awesome. Yeah, every, everyone else is screwed. <laughs> I think yeah. that I, I could be wrong, but I think that Microsoft is subsidizing the cost of the Legion Go and the ROG Ally because of that Game Pass. Uh, mm. You know, you've got the three months of Game Pass that you get when you buy yeah. those. That's got to be because Microsoft is saying, hey, we're going to give you guys some money towards this so that you'll put Windows on it, and that way it can be a Game Pass machine, which is not what any of us are talking about. Like, I, I don't know. I, okay, I, know, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but it's not what I'm interested in. I would <laughs> prefer, just like Carrie, to pick up a system and hit the Xbox button and have it boot up like my Xbox. And then I don't have all the PC crap to, to deal with just to have it be a console. Um, that's just me. Everybody else can have their own thing. That's totally fine. But that's, that's one of the things that I would like to see Microsoft actually force, like force valve to compete with them because right now, Nobody, I feel like, is playing on a level playing field with Valve when it comes to this stuff because just the Steam Deck is just so much, for me, better than the others, yeah. even though the other systems are really good. What, what's up, Rich? And one more thing that um, doesn't get considered a lot is that either explicitly or implicitly, they, Valve, has exclusivity around that low power envelope, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if AMD is not allowed to sell their chips to anyone else, but either way, they are not, right? Like those Van Gogh or uh, custom GPU 0405 are not going to anybody else other than Valve. Um, and so it seems like no one else can compete at that 12 watt and below, which is a big deal, right? For battery life or for people that actually want to have, use this as a handheld and not just bust it out for hour, two hours. Yeah, yeah. I, the the battery life, especially on the new Steam Deck, is just so much better than everything else. Um, it's crazy to me. Like I sit down to you use the ROG Ally this weekend, and I was like, "Oh, I'll install Halo because I want to try Gyro." Um, and like I, I'm downloading. Hey, I should have plugged it in while I was downloading. But by the time it got done downloading Halo, I was at like eighty percent already. And then I turned it on, and I I will say I like I like their new, the horizontal bar instead of the big square um, mm. performance overlay. Um, you know I I booted up Halo and I was like okay I'm going to configure it so that I can maintain 60 frames per second. So I changed a couple things and brought it up, and sure enough it's it's running everything. And then it was it told me that I was like running at 40 watts, and I was like okay well only going to be able to play this for. A little bit longer before I'm going to have to charge it, which it charges quickly. I get, but that low power envelope or is is just huge on the Steam Deck, and the OLED Steam Deck has a 50 watt hour battery, which is the biggest one out of all of them. Well, probably not like the the Ioneo Kune. I, I think that that I think that that one has a bigger battery, but still, it's it's pretty close. Uh, all right. Uh, any other uh, comments that you guys saw in chat that you want me to uh, to jump in here, or do you guys want to move on to uh, something I'll, else? I'll call out one comment. Well, one series of comments Richard has been posting about his problems with the OLED deck. Um, and one thing he said is that Valve's help service is bad as well. They reply once a week. Uh, why do you lot say it's good? So I don't know if you lot refers to us here. I will say... I don't think Valve's customer service is good. It, I think it is better than a lot of the other customer service experiences. Like, I, like Bill, what you experienced with Sony, I haven't experienced that with Valve. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, I think, what I think happens with Valve customer service, so I think it was Richard also pointed out that the Valve only has like 360 employees. I don't know the right number, but obviously they're a small company when it comes to full-time employees. I think what happens with Valve customer service is that it works when it works, right? So like if you want to return a game within that two-hour, two-week window, then they don't have to do anything, right? They, they just rubber stamp it. You're good to go. But if you want to do anything that's relatively complicated or in this case with the oled deck maybe there are a number of issues maybe that queue is quite long 
um, that's when it starts to get uh, a little a little out of their normal operating standards, and yeah, it can get pretty bad sometimes. I think. Yeah, I I have to admit I've never needed to use Valve's customer service. Um, I've returned a game or two, and that was like instantaneous because a person doesn't have to do anything. So, uh, Russ, have you ever had to deal with their customer service? Never. It's it's one of those things that feel bad, like as a reviewer, but I never get that experience, unfortunately. You know, uh, a good example is the ROG Ally. Like I mentioned in my six month follow up, where both of my two Z1 Extremes, the SD card reader went bad. And so my contact like said, Hey, I watched your video. I noticed you, you still have problems with it. He's like, why don't we set up a thing where you do an art like RMA on it. And then you can talk about the customer service experience. I'm like, that'll be perfect. We'll do it anonymously, all this kind of stuff. Right. He's like, Oh, wait, okay. we can't do it anonymously. You don't have a receipt. He's like, sorry, we can't do it. We just got to do it the reviewer way. We're going to send you a new one. <laughs> and so uh, it's very hard good. for us to get that true experience. I would have loved that. I would love to been able to report on that, but unfortunately it just doesn't work. Even with the smaller Chinese companies, I try to buy these things anonymously, but they know if somebody's buying it in Hawaii, it's probably going to be me. And so they'll like pack in extra <laughs> handhelds and stuff. Clacks so, start going can... around like, woo, right, woo. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I ordered one handheld and I got two in the mail. I'm like, what the heck? just happened and they're like oh yeah we, we, it was us I'm like, so yeah it's hard for us to speak on that experience unfortunately that's wild that's too funny uh we got a super chat that just came in from burger bear thank you so much uh burger bear for supporting the channel uh he's been a long time chatter and he said uh do you think there could ever be a world where microsoft and valve combine forces in the handheld space i'm gonna say no but and i could be wrong about this i think i remember gabe newell saying if microsoft wants to bring x cloud or X, not x cloud x uh, uh game pass if they just want to bring game pass to to steam we got no problem with that but steam like uh steam but microsoft hasn't hasn't said anything like in response to that in fact this week microsoft talked a little bit about getting um game pass on other platforms and they said we have no plans to and for most of those, like Game Pass on Switch, I think Nintendo would say, you know, get bent. Um, <laughs> Game Pass on PlayStation, I think, uh, you know, PlayStation would say, no, thank you. I'm not interested in. Uh, but Valve has said, at least I believe that they did. This is like a year and a half ago. They can do it, but Microsoft hasn't done it yet. Uh, Rich, do, am I remembering that wrong or is that no, accurate? Not that is accurate. Uh, so a similar thing that Steam has is EA Play, right? So it would be similar to what Game Pass would be. Um, and I picture that Game Pass, if Microsoft wanted to bring it over, would be adopted similarly to what EA Play does. And EA Play is a subscription that you can you know, sign on to using Steam. And then you can, using Steam, you can download the games under your subscription and play them natively. So that would be, I would imagine that Game Pass could do the same thing. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I don't think that, just like Phil saying he's not bringing it to Switch and bring it, not bringing it to PlayStation, I don't think they're terribly interested in bringing it to Steam. I don't think, I think they, they want their own presence. And I think uh, Universal Windows apps are part of them wanting that presence and part of where they see their future. It's it's kind of like their own fault though, isn't it? Like uh, it's such it's not the best experience. You know how demoralizing it must be. It's like Game Pass is on Steam and like Game Pass subscriptions like rise like crazy, and all of a sudden <laughs> exactly. no, no one's using the Xbox app anymore. Everyone's just exactly. using Steam, Steam directly. Exactly. And it's like, oh man, guys, we made a big pile of crap. Didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that means more Game Pass subscriptions. Like, yeah, I told, that's, yeah. yeah, that's a lot of money. <laughs> The thing about Microsoft, they're too big to pivot like that. They've invested all these time, like the, they have teams that are working on these things. I, I just, you know, coming from a government bureaucratic job previously, you know, that's there's too many things in the in motion right now. That they can't just go and pivot like a smaller company could because it makes so much sense, right? Put Game Pass on Steam. Let figure out what the opportunity is going to be and then follow that. But when you're big like that, you can't, you know, you basically have to have a five year plan. And if it doesn't work out, you're still on the track for it. Yeah, my. Yeah, and we, I mean, Charlie? we saw their five-year plan. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to talk right. over you, Rich. Go ahead. No, you're good. You're good. Is it is it Charlie from Always Sunny in Philadelphia with the with the board? 
You mean you mean Carrie right. from Always Sunny in right. Philadelphia? Carrie, yeah. <laughs> my my Charlie theory, which I think is pretty pretty, like it's not it's pretty bland, right? But my theory for Microsoft is that they're waiting for the opportunity to move Windows to ARM, right? As soon as you, we can move Windows and PC gaming to ARM, they'll have the opportunity then to have the Windows Store and Windows apps in full control like they used to have and that's when that's when we'll see their big master plan kind of come to fruition mm. it would be amazing um, windows arm handhelds be amazing could we could we all collectively put our tinfoil hat on real quick just so we can yes let's do it let's do it uh so jez corden from windows central he actually had an interview with uh um uh, phil spencer <laughs> and he was talking about handhelds and you know he's like, oh, we love handhelds, but you know, for the for that part, uh, you'd really have to talk to Sarah Bond. And I've tweeted him. I was like, thank you so much for mentioning Xbox handhelds. Now I know I need to speak to Sarah Bond about Xbox handhelds. <laughs> and she liked the tweet, and I was just like, uh. <laughs> why do you put hope in me? <laughs> like, yeah. So that's uh, that's the conspiracy yep. theory for today. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, someone I mean, pointed out Windows is already on ARM. It is. I meant the main place to get Windows, the main place to compute. Yeah, and there's going to be people who are like, well, they can't do that. But Apple has shown that you can transition from one chip type to another chip type. And like they did it with when they went from whatever power PC to Intel and right. then Intel over to uh, the M series M1. chips. Yeah. yeah, the Apple chips. Um and they just had like a little translation for Lair for a while. The one difference is Apple is like super controlling and they're like, you're going to change your stuff and it's going to work. You're like, we're going to do this for a while, but then you're going to change your stuff and you're going to have it run on the new chips or it's not going to be there. On uh, On Windows, like nobody goes to the App Store on Windows. So Microsoft can't really control it like that do you guys i i know that it's possible but do you guys think that microsoft could actually get that to work or are they trapped oh, yeah. by legacy and the fact no. that nobody wants to use windows store 100 percent, they can get it done the microsoft is the only company that i mean l let's look at it from the the original xbox one right the original xbox xbox one with amd jaguar cores right these are like amd's garbage atoms cpus and somehow Microsoft's team managed to get Xbox 360 emulation to run on that. That is like a miracle beyond miracles. Now they could say whatever they want, like, you know, they, they have other extensions that they work with AMD on and stuff, but the work that they did to get that done, the emulation layer to just make that work and then also make them better than the original Xbox 360 counterparts is no small task. Just because they have, you know, they're, they, that's their, that's their bread and butter. So when you look at their software side, yeah, when you take, when you think about the ARM translation layer that they have to do for x86 and stuff, I think that they're uniquely suited to tackle that. The biggest problem I think is not one of a technical challenge, but it's more of like a contractual or whatever challenge in so far that like Qualcomm is like the only one that can like work with Windows on ARM at the moment. There's some weird nonsense with Snapdragon and Windows mm. and no other ARM thing running on there. So there's a few key points that need to get addressed for running ARM, um, you know, in terms of like bootloaders and everything else for uh, getting ARM to run on Windows in a general manner. And whenever we see that happen, I do think that Windows has the capability to handle the legacy stuff via emulation layers. So whatever abstraction they need to do for like, you know, whatever is going on for APIs and stuff that they can do it. I'm, I'm a firm believer of that. All right. Well, I hope that you're right because uh, it would just be fantastic to to see these these handhelds with ARM chips in them uh, because it's so much more efficient than right. it, than than what we're doing now. Like, I I can't even imagine what the battery would be like. Battery life would be like using those chips. Uh, it would just be insane uh, how much better yeah. it would be. Um, it's we funny. Had we're, a, we're, go ahead, Ru Russ. I was just going to one quick mention. I was going to say, you know, we're, we're talking all about how great it would be on a handheld, but, you know, the laptop space is much bigger than handhelds. And that's where a lot of those efficiencies are going to come from. Like when the when the tide turns in the laptop space, that's when we'll probably see a lot of, like more major adoption, I think, at that point. That makes a lot of sense, too. Uh, yeah, because we're, we're small potatoes. The handheld PC 
space is very, very small potatoes. But laptops, that, that's like really where the king is. Um, we had a super chat come in from Sergeant Reaper and another one from Diamond Geezer, which I think I want to save until the end for Diamond Geezer. Uh, although your name is awesome and that makes me laugh. Um, <laughs> but Sergeant Reaper said, uh, last year I refunded my Valve Index kit since after two days the right controller failed. The replacement one didn't stay on unless it was connected to my desktop via USB cable. Steam support was good. So, um, you know, but here's the thing. You're in any any time you're dealing with a device that is made by like in, in the thousands, you're going to get some good ones. You're going to get some stinkers. And anytime you're dealing with customer support, you're going to get some good ones. You're going to get some stinkers. I have made phone calls to companies to try and like get something replaced and like had a horrible experience and horrible enough that I hung up on them and said, I'm not talking to you anymore. And then I call back the next day and I get somebody else and they're like actually helpful. So sometimes you're going to get good experiences. Sometimes you're going to get bad experiences. Uh, I'm, I'm super happy that you had a good experience though. Uh, so that, that's really cool. Um, all right, moving on to, um, what, uh, well, I mean, we've been talking about this for 50 minutes, so no, so let's, let's, let's power through a little bit more. Uh, GTA six, let's move on to some gaming news. Uh, GTA six is, uh, coming out or we're getting, um, we got a countdown, uh, over on, uh, I think it's IGN or whatever. And t Tuesday, December 5th. That's tomorrow, 9 a.m. Eastern time. Um, and here's the question for all of you in, in chat and, of course, the panel. Are you guys hyped for GTA 6? Rich, I'll start with you. Are you hyped for it? Not me. <laughs> so I, I, I say that because I said in chat with you guys, I don't know that I have the faith in Rockstar to make a good game right now. Um, so, yeah, I, I hope GTA 6 is good. Um, I hope it's excellent. I really enjoyed GTA five. I think it was the best one, like even just single player campaign, right? Um, obviously it had its legs thanks to GTA online, but I thought that campaign was really, really good. Um, I just, I've seen what rockstar has done in the last few years and I've just lost a lot of faith in them. I also think they've had a, a ton of turnover. So a lot of the folks that were there and working on those big games, the good ones, um, they're just not there anymore. Um, so I'm dubious. I'll say that. Uh, but th that said, I'm still excited for the trailer for sure. Russ, uh, I'm I'm the worst Grand Theft Auto fan in the world. I bought GTA three when it first came out on the PS two. Played it for a bit, but I was um, I was at my parents' house on leave right after boot camp, and so I was just bored out of my skull. So a lot of the time that I played with it was out of boredom, and then I never really played it again. All those fetch quests just really got to me, and I haven't really played a game ever since. I bought GTA four day it came out, played it for a day, never played it again. I have GTA five, and I use it for benchmarking, and that's it. And so <laughs> I'm I'm not going to be waking up at four in the morning my time to watch this video when it first goes <laughs> out, but I will probably watch it that day. We'll see. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll definitely watch it, but I, I don't know if I'll watch it like when it when it happens. Actually, it's 9 a.m., right? I'll be at work. So, no, I won't be watching it. Um, <laughs> Carrie, uh, are you a GTA fan? I am a GTA fan. Uh, I, I, I enjoy GTA 1 and 2 when they originally came out, the top down ones. And I was like, man, if they ever make this game in 3D, it's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I saw just like a tiny little snippet of GTA 3 and just one picture. And I was going to everyone before this came out. I'm like, this is going to be amazing. Oh, my God, it's going to be <laughs> outrageous. And it, when it came out, it was like er everything that I had hoped for was actually in the game, like how they would transition from the original top down ones, 2D ones to 3D. And it's become such a force. I am a fan of GTA. GTA 4, I played through all, all the way, but I really wasn't a fan of the protagonist and everything else that was going on there. I just didn't like really feel that. GTA 5, I liked how they did everything better, but I never finished the game. I just kind of like went through it and never finished it. I really should. Um, and it kind of doesn't matter if any of us like GTA 6 because they are such... It's like the Grand Theft Auto is such a powerhouse that like when Take-Two is doing their shareholder meetings, it's like, okay, that was Take-Two. We're going to let Rockstar speak for themselves now. And they just like leave <laughs> so that <laughs> Rockstar can come. Like the parent company is like, go ahead, child company. Speak for yourself. 
<laughs> and it speaks volumes when they make like one like banner image with like purple in it and like every game company is like we gotta copy it right now <laughs> oh my god yeah <laughs> i didn't understand that was that literally what it was they just all did the gta thing i i didn't it's, get that <laughs> like halo uh, and to, like gta itself is a phenomenon uh, yeah. and you know, once they start their marketing blitz, when they're starting spending like billions of dollars or whatever on their marketing blitz and New York buildings have uh, GTA, just like just a whole mural done on a gigantic building. Right. Like that's when hype starts getting unreal. And um, yeah, once you see that, like the text, right? Like the, the, the white font with the black border. Once you see that yeah. Grand Theft Auto 6, that's when people are gonna start just losing their minds and all, you know, like context goes out of the window and nothing matters anymore. And every game company is like, when is the release date? Good gravy, we gotta just not release on that date. Everyone just push back or pull around. Just leave that nuke by itself. Like that's how big Grand Theft Auto is. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if- I feel, go ahead. I was just saying, I wonder if Call of Duty and like Madden and some of those really big ticket items that (laughs) non-gamers game on, like if they only released a game every five years, if that same hype level would be there, you know what I mean? But because it's every year, we just don't see it. This is something I thought about right then. Oh, you're absolutely right. We, we totally see these companies. um, They, they release it so often that it just dilutes it, it. It's like people only have so much hype available at any one time. And so every time they put out like the next call of duty, the next Madden, the next FIFA or football club or whatever it's called. All these, all these franchises that are every single year, people are like, yay, a roster update. Like they can't, they can't (laughs) change it enough to, to actually make it worth the update. It's kind of like, you know, when you're talking about hardware where you can't get a big enough update to really make it worth it, even though I'm okay with them releasing every year. Um, but with these games, you, you're 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 not wrong about that. It's it's kind of crazy. As far as like me, I could not care less about GTA. I played GTA three. I liked it because I could drive around listening to eighties music as somebody who grew up listening was, to eighties music, yeah. and that was the only thing I liked about it. I don't like Rockstar games. I don't think that they're very. I don't. I know that they tell good stories because everybody talks about how great the stories are. But I don't like the way the games control. They feel like I'm driving a car even when I'm not in a car. And I <laughs> I can't stand that. Carrie, you, you want to yell at me. Go ahead. No, I don't. I want to be I'm in full agreement with you. I actually talked to a Rockstar dev about this when Grand Theft Auto 4 came out. I was like, I was like, why do you guys continually to uh, you know, make Grand Theft Auto like operate like it's it's an old, you know, PlayStation controller? We have analog sticks. I don't need a hammer A to run. I can just push up on an analog stick. And if I want to walk, I just like lower that. You guys know that there's analog sticks, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a pet peeve of mine. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe GTA 6 will be great. But even if it's not, they have a built-in excuse. Oh, it was bad because our code got stolen and we had to start a bunch of stuff over. Um, so even if it doesn't turn out to be like the... The second coming, like everybody seems to think it's going to be, um, they have a built-in excuse and they can be like, well, don't steal our stuff, you bunch of jerks. And I think that that's fair. (laughs) If it does end up sucking uh, by any means, yeah, the the backlash I think is going to be pretty bad. Um, Even if it's amazing, the backlash is going to be bad. uh, People's, People's expectations are way too high. Yeah. They are high, but at the same time, the the hype engine, like the everyone's hype thrusters, like it, <laughs> it like it changes things a bit. Like uh, we can we can say this all we want, but I mean, I haven't played Super Mario Wonder, right? So I'm probably just talking out of my ass here. But I don't think <laughs> Super Mario Wonder should have been on the game. You know, it's not game of the year. It's just a good game. It's a good Mario game, but it's not game of the year. I don't know. Wait, Maybe wait, wait. I'm... We, we got to do this. What are your games of the year? Oh yeah, I'm not saying Mario Wonder or... is on. Go ahead. What's that? Give Favorite me, me game five. of the year. Rich, go. Uh, five. All right. I'm going to go Pizza Tower, Baldur's Gate 3, five? Sea of Stars. One. One game? Yeah, you only Let's get one do... game. Your favorite game right. of the year. I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going either. I'm going Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate 3. If I got to pick one. 
Because three is going to sweep. Yeah, Boulder's Gate 3, 100%. Russ. Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> fight, fight, fight. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's a game we'll be playing 10 years from now. I don't know about it's the a good others. game. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm not I, saying it's not, I'm not saying it's not a good game. I'm not saying I'm, it's not a good game. I'm, I, I will argue for its inclusion in game of the year. It's not in my top five, but that's but I like my taste is weird, right? Like I just yeah. said pizza tower. So like, <laughs> but like I'm only on me, world three of the game, too. You know what I mean? And so uh, yeah, it's the experience. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pizza Tower is a better uh, game of the year than Super Mario Wonder. And it, there's a part that I feel like if you have something new and it's refreshing and something's going on, that has to count for something. And if people are continually complaining like, oh, there's another Call of Duty, there's another FIFA, and that's all that there is to play. It's like, well, perhaps play something else. Or maybe let's like highlight some other things that are... Like Hi-Fi Rush was a good game. I don't think that's game of the year, but I think Super Mario Wonder and Hi-Fi Rush are good games. But I, I, would, I would say... As a fan of Hi-Fi Rush, Mario Wonder is is like a full point ahead of it. Like it just like the like how we, they I, I just watching the trailer alone. Super Mario Wonder had a <laughs> bunch of detail, and you can see the love and care and attention that they put into it. So I'm not going to say that that's not there. I'm just saying yeah. that I also saw it, and I was like, it's yeah, a that's a Mario game. game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I, you know, I get it, but also like, I don't know. Well, uh, you know, you brought up Pizza Bill, Tower. What's your choice uh, for yeah. for Game of the Year? Zelda, the Tears of the Kingdom, unbelievable experience from beginning to end. Baldur's Gate Three is right there, but but I have to say Zelda because that game captured me and did not let go. Like there, you like, I have scars. <laughs> like it was, I, I could not get away from that game. It was so amazing. And I felt like I could go wherever the hell I wanted and do whatever the hell I wanted in that game. And nothing ever got in my way and said, you can't do that. You can't do that. Like, it's like, no, I, just, I want to build a spaceship and fly around and, and have it f fly around shooting lasers at monsters. I could do that if I wanted. Um, and then the fact that, we knew about the sky, and of course we knew about the ground, but we didn't know about the underground. And that that first moment in that game where I didn't know about it because I avoided all the spoilers, and I jumped off the thing, and I was like, "Hey, what's that? What's that hole in the ground over there?" And then there's this whole other place. I was like, "Are you kidding me? That <laughs> that has to be my game of the year." But now I'm going to make everybody mad. Everybody in chat is going to be mad at me. Everybody on the panel is going to be mad at me. I bought Pizza Tower because Rich said that it was awesome, and I it's cannot awesome. stand that game. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I think why I do people it. like this? It's a very specific game. So, like, if you were to play it, so it's like Sonic, right? If you just play from beginning to end, if you just play Sonic, like, you're just trying to get to the goal, and you never replay any levels, like, Sonic's okay. It's not bad. It's once you like learn the routes and start memorizing ways to go that like really boost your speed and stuff like that, that Sonic gets fun. And Pizza Tower is like that, right? Like you have to play the same level for an hour and a half. And that's when it starts getting fun, which okay. is, I know it sounds ridiculous, but that that's, that's what I enjoy. I enjoy ranking up. I'm not giving up on it, uh, but I played it and I'm just, like, the music is a little irritating in the beginning level. And like <laughs> the fact that the, the text has like all this crap behind it, which makes it hard to read. I'm like, mm -hmm. they made some choices that I feel like were, they made the choices in order to say, Hey, look at how different this is. Even if they were bad choices, does that make sense? Oh. Yeah, that's the other side of what Carrie is saying, right? Like Carrie is saying, like, you have to be different to really for me to really consider you as like one of mm -hmm. the most interesting best games of the year. And you're saying, OK, but like you can't be so different that you are just different for the sake of being different. Contrarian. Yeah. Contrarian. Exactly. There you go. All right. Yep. Um, so real quick, I ran a poll earlier. Should Asus and Lenovo update the ally and go each year like a laptop? 65% said no. 
34% uh, said yes. That is closer than I thought. I thought it was going to be yeah. way in the no category, like way more. Um, and then I ran another poll, uh, and I just uh, and I said, are you hyped for GTA 6? This is so close. 50% said no. 49% said yes. I don't know how that works. Uh, it must be <laughs> so close that it's like there's <laughs> there's a very tiny difference between them. So uh, that's, that's very cool. Um, real quick, I wanted to talk about uh, an update that happened to the Steam Deck. And... Rich brought it to our attention. So, Rich, you want to talk about this real quick? I, wait, which update? 120. Oh, the 120 hertz. So, I mean, well, that's been uh, that. I thought you wanted to talk about like with the X Roll glasses. Yeah, yeah, that's hertz. what I mean. Okay, so 120 hertz has been available on the Steam Deck with SteamOS 3.5. So, whether mm -hmm. you have LCD or OLED, you can go to 120 hertz for, of course, for the OLED on the display, you're maxed at 90. And for the LCD on the native display, you're maxed at 60. But if you dock it, you can get to 120 or 144 even, I think. Um, it, anyway, the point is, if you have the X-Real Air 2s, um, you can get the full 120 hertz. So I've been like playing more with the X-Real Air 2s and it does feel like, especially if you have the LCD, it feels like you're kind of closing the gap on the Steam Deck OLED because you get the 120 hertz, you get a bigger display display because it's 1080p so to speak um you get the those nicer colors things like that so i i've been enjoying the x Real air 2s and they they seem like a good complement for the lcd especially if you just if one of the things you want is a higher refresh rate right but you weren't able to get i was i was so, podcasting yeah. in here just a second ago so maybe i missed what you said you weren't able to get the 120 hertz to work on your glasses with the oled but you were on the lcd right so I'm able to get them work on both. Uh, Kyle helped me out. It was the problem where you, oh. I was not setting the desktop resolution or the, the max resolution on the Steam Deck settings in the display. So once you do that, you can get the 120 hertz. What oh, I still okay. am not able to do is use the beam with the Steam Deck OLED. So I can use the beam on the Steam Deck LCD. I cannot use it on the Steam Deck OLED. I don't know if anyone else has that problem, but I know that that's something I've been I haven't tried. With. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because we all got button. them before the Steam Deck OLED came out, so I, don't, I think a lot of us didn't try. I was not able to get it to work after you said that. What were you about to say, Carrie? No, I when I I always use Direct Connect, so I'm just doing Direct USB C directly to the glasses itself with all the other handhelds that have USB C to Display Port or whatever. I never use the Beam. Beam is just like an interface for connecting like a PlayStation or whatever, something that doesn't have the capability of doing USB to directly to the glasses beam gotcha. also for the steam deck this isn't worth it right but the beam also lets you do the thing where you can the spatial put, yeah so you can look yeah. around yeah 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 exactly. yeah i thought i was going to like that a lot more than i did it, i like yeah. the one where when i move it moves slower uh, Dude, so instead yeah. of like on a, on a train or on a plane that's going to be huge uh but like in your house that's not that important Do any of you guys have the quest three yet <sighs> not yet <laughs> get it now. I brought this up in my review and a lot of people were like, a Quest 3 and the errors are way different. And I'm like, no, if you're going to be using the spatial part of the beam, they're actually like kind of similar. Uh, mm -hmm. The Quest 3 and how it does the spatial stuff is like crazy good. Like crazy. And also they have games that are mixed reality that um, they'll just like kind of put stuff in that they're spatially aware of like, oh, that's that looks like something. What is that? Is that a table? And you kind of like, Loop, there's a table and like there's a door and there's a window. And then all of a sudden you're playing a zombie game and like they're bursting through the windows inside your <laughs> living room. And it's like, well, that's super cool. And it always remembers what it's so good. It's so good. So, um, that's amazing. yeah, I feel like Quest 3 is, uh, oh, you know, I got to use the Steam Link on Quest 3 just because that seems like it's like way better than air link because you need to like have the oculus software running on your pc mm -hmm. and you can skip that whole part um mm -hmm. that's really cool that facebook or meta allowed that app to even exist um because that feels almost trojan horsey to like very <laughs> you're like okay right. can we have our app on there you're like yeah yeah we have a bunch of vr games it's cool don't worry <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> So, uh, Rich, are you, you definitely buying one then? Because he and I were talking yesterday, and then I, I know he's a basketball fan, so I sent him a video of that I had, I had found on threads of like somebody watching it in v, watching a basketball, uh, an NBA game 
like courtside seats in VR so and the players are running back and forth. And I was like, you got to see this. And he is like, okay, I'm buying it. Are you buying it? Yeah. Did you buy it? I'm buying it. I'm, I haven't <laughs> bought it yet, but I'm going to buy it. It really, the uh, Steam Link VR was enough to put me over. Uh, be, you know why too, is that um, it's the other side of what Carrie's saying. And I'm going to read, I, I have this in the video that I have coming soon, um, but I'm going to read a post from Resetera where it's like, Someone says, Blue Manifest says, this makes it sound like Valve is just planning on supporting Facebook's headset more instead of making their own. And Gothi replies, uh, basically, this is where his head is at too. Meta is conceding the PC VR space and Valve is conceding the VR hardware area. And I feel like that, like, as much as uh, this is a Trojan horse, I also feel like Valve is like, I don't really want to put out VR hardware right now. You know, that's actually a good point. I think would actually come as a full circle for this entire conversation that we have, that there may be a possibility that Valve is doing too good in the PC handheld gaming space that they might need to step back and just allow Asus and Lenovo to be in this space because they're going to be eating into those profits that are not going to be sustainable for them, that there may be a future where Valve will just have to say, you know what, we're doing, we're interfering with this too much and we've introduced this concept. We're not going to make another one. Uh, mm -hmm. There is that case as well. Uh, so that's a, you know, I could totally see Valve doing that because Valve isn't in the exclusive game. They don't care that, you know, they're not trying to be the only one. They want everyone there. They like their partners, just like Microsoft likes their partners. You mm -hmm. think of like the Surface laptop. They could have went hardcore on that and like beat, undercut everyone else. But there's no, there's no, that's not winning for them because if they're going to beat HP, Lenovo and all these other guys so badly that it's not going to make them want to be a partner of theirs. You know what I mean? So you, you, yeah. there's this weird kind of thing there where something has to give. And it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. Even though I would love Valve to continue doing this, and I think all collectively, everyone here, and including chat, wants Valve to make the Deckard. Um, yeah, I, there's, there's a lot of steps there. And I probably want to... Uh, there's someone that asked me if the 8850U would be good enough for Valve's next Steam Deck, and I don't think it would be. Um, it, RDNA is not there, even RDNA 3+, Plus, which would also mean for Deckard as well, but that's been a thing that we've talked about previously as well. As far as Valve putting the the Steam Link on MetaQuest, and, or the, the Quest 3, and Facebook allowing it, um, Facebook is allowing it because they're like, we know that there's a lot of people that want that are going to buy this to use with their computers, you know? And if we don't allow it, then it's going to be kind of like we're going to lose money. And Valve is doing it because I don't think they're conceding anything. They're just saying, look, there's customers over there that we can reach into their wallets. And we can't reach into their wallets if we don't do it this way. So let's reach into their wallets. The same reason why Microsoft sells Minecraft on every system. Because they want money. And it's just smart. Uh, yeah. So I think, I think that both companies are just saying, hey, this is a way for us to make money. And, you know, I think if anybody has something more to lose there, I think it would be Facebook because people might not buy. Actually, I don't even think that's true because, yeah, there's going to be a subset of people that are buying their games from Steam and playing them on the MetaQuest 3 and skipping over the store. But there's going to be a much larger group of people who never can connect this thing to a computer ever and just buy the games directly from meta uh which i hate that i just called them meta i always like to call them facebook so i don't like that <laughs> did you guys did you guys see that valve actually supports in steam link all of the um eye recognition stuff so yeah uh, on the, yeah on the quest like foveated Pro, rendering based on where you're but looking? not just not even foveated rendering that is supported as well but also to uh inform a character that your eyes are moving around in the correct location so for like vr chat if you're like looking around with your eyes, your character in VR chat is looking around with their eyes like that as well. And Steam wow. Link supports that, which is wild. Um, so wild. Yeah, it's really, really That's cool. Uh, when you think about like, you know, virtual worlds and actually jumping into virtual worlds, uh, that that one feature, I didn't even know it was possible until when someone said, you know, like, oh, Steam Link, uh, the app works with Quest Pros. And I was like, oh, crap. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, not that I want to play VR chat, but I just really like the the idea of like you could clearly see when, where someone's looking inside of a yeah. virtual space instead of just having like a dead face, but like a uh, yeah, it's, it makes I people feel more realistic. Yeah, yeah. but I, I am disappointed that the MetaQuest three 
doesn't have the eye tracking. Yep. yep. Because that like it ha I believe MetaQuest 3 has foveated rendering, but it's just lo uh, locked to the center of the screen, right? Not that I'm aware of. Oh, it doesn't you have could, it at all. No. You, oh, there's okay. passive foveated rendering techniques, uh, like checkerboard rendering, what PlayStation does. It's a passive foveated rendering technique. Um, the You wouldn't really be able to do that on something where you're looking, because the whole point of foveated rendering is only to have high resolution where you're looking, because we don't have a high resolution in our adjacent peripheral. Uh, so this would be like a performance enhancement thing. So just having it in the center would not be good because if you look around, it would be low resolution. Um, okay. So no, yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, uh, I think that we can wrap super things chat. up with this super chat that came in from uh, Diamond Geezer and Burger Bear. Uh, Burger Bear says Baldur's Gate 3 is the GOAT. Didn't have a chance to play Zelda, Bill, and Russ. It's oh, and Russ is just wrong. Russ, apparently you're wrong. <laughs> I'm so good. Mario, I'm is okay that with that. Mario? <laughs> I, you know, but speaking of the Game Awards, we might be doing a stream uh, for the Game Awards where we're all gonna like watch it together. So make sure you guys like subscribe and turn on notifications so that you can find that if we do it. Uh, we're not positive if we're doing that or not yet on Thursday. Uh, at 7.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern is when the, the those th uh, actually happen. Uh, but let's wrap up the show with this uh, super chat from Diamond Geezer. They said, uh, only one handheld. What would you choose right now? Russ. Steam Deck OLED. Carrie? Uh, 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 the GPD Win Max 2 is what I'm using right now. So if I can only have one uh, handheld, that would be it. Wow. Rich? Steam Deck OLED. And it's a Steam Deck OLED for me too. So, um, <laughs> I I don't know. I would love to know what everybody else thinks. Let us know in the comment section down below uh, that like button. And uh, if you are listening to the show in your favorite podcasting app, then make sure you rate it five stars. And if you want to get this show without any ads in it, then consider supporting our Patreon, which there is a link in the show notes or in the description, whatever it is that you want to call it. There's a link that'll take you there. You can listen to the Patreon. Sometimes we get bonus content, like if we record before we actually start the uh, the, the actual show, and sometimes there's some, some bonus content that comes after. Um, none for this particular episode, but uh, we really do appreciate the, the, the support for the Patreon. And uh, I think that's going to do it for today. Before we wrap up, Russ, latest video? I just dropped today my favorite handhelds of the year, and lo and behold, Ooh. Steam Deck OLED was at the top. So Nice. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> uh, Emilio Sanchez says, says y'all are getting ads. Uh, the ads are not during the live show. It'll never be during the live show. Well, I'm not going to say never, uh, but maybe someday. But right now, there's no ads in it. Um, Rich, uh, what's your newest video? Uh, so I should have video out here, hopefully in 15 minutes from now, um, for, yeah, just my next news video. So talking about the Arkham Knight port to Switch, <laughs> how bad that oh, was. Nice. And, Yikes. And um, HD Arkham and a Chiaki for a deck, which is pretty cool. Which, by the way, I tried out Chiaki. Um, I found a, a, a very easy link to get me my stupid 64-bit key or whatever for my PlayStation ID. Mm -hmm. I didn't have yeah. to type in my password or anything. It was way yeah. easier than I thought. And it works no really well. What's that? No 44%? No 44%. Somebody said, did ask me. Uh, they said, hey, uh, uh, Shan said, uh, Bill, were you able to finally update and use your PS portal? No. I returned it, and I got the money back yesterday, and I have not decided if I'm going to go and try and buy another one uh, or stick with it just uh, maybe I'll just use the Steam Deck. I don't know. Carrie, what's your latest video, man? Uh, the, uh, GPD sent me their latest uh, GPD Win Mini, which uh, improves the mid shell, which switches to a blend of plastic and glass fiber to insulate the heat. And it's remarkably better, like substantially better, where I don't even notice it at all. And I played for an hour and a half, whereas before I noticed it within like 20 minutes. So uh, it's fantastic. My latest video is The Return of the King for the GPD <laughs> mini the uh it's it's a great time for anyone that has waited for a GPD win 2 successor 
And if you guys are watching this and you have not yet subscribed to all of these guys' channels, make sure you head on over to youtube.com slash fan the deck, youtube.com slash retro game core, and youtube.com slash the fox. That's T H E P H A W X. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, uh, make sure that you subscribe to the Nerd Nest as well. From the Nerd Nest, stay rad, everybody. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.